You betcha, I'm George, and today we're going to be making a thumbnail using Photopea, which is a free kind of Adobe Photoshop uh, image editor. So I use this for all of my thumbnails for my YouTube videos. So I am going to show you guys today, and I'm actually going to be making a thumbnail of this video. So the kind of idea I'm going to go for is a kind of you look into it and it loops and it's looking to himself kind of continuously forever try to look for some type of effect like that but I'm gonna go through each kind of every single piece of Photopea that I use at all so that I can kind of do this knowledge transfer to anybody that's looking to start use this tool first we're gonna start with new and we're just gonna use uh, this 1080p 1920 by 1080 for a YouTube thumbnail so you start with white background you have your layers over here Right away, I'm gonna just grab, you can see uh, these things are clip art if you click on the picture and they have these um, boxes back here. So that means when you paste it in, you're not gonna see anything behind it. So we can delete this other layer and, oh, uh, looks like we can see the box behind it. So let's grab a different one instead. I like this one, so. And you can just copy and paste stuff in Photopea. I'm not too worried about what type of copyright it has just because I'm not making any money from YouTube anyway, so if they copyright my videos, I don't really care. An easy way if you can't copy and paste stuff, for example, off of Google Drive, which I use, you can, uh, with Windows at least, uh, Windows Shift S is a great way to just copy stuff. So I just took a photo quick. And I wanted one of my computer screen because I, I figured that's how I'm going to kind of make this endless loop. It was with my screen. So I did take it with my rear camera, so it's a little bit blurry, but that was the best way I could see it. You can see the layers over here. If you drag it up to the top or down, you can change the layers. You can also click on this eye to hide them. Now that we have two layers, I can actually uh, let's move this photo P at a gram. Maybe like that. What I want this copied, That's I want this to be like the very last thing when I copy over this. And this might be difficult just how it's curved, but we'll see if we can't manipulate the image anymore. So go through each of the tools here. These have your normal transform. Like um, this normal select tool has the ability to move stuff around and also transform it like you're probably used to. You can also turn off the transform controls, so if you don't see them, you can actually turn that on. Uh, I never use distances, but that might be nice, especially if, since I like I know the size of my the pixels on the image, 1080 tall by 1920 long. Uh, I don't worry about the rest of that. So this next tool lets you select a rectangular area. Uh, for example, with this image, I could select that and then grab the select tool and move that around don't necessarily want to do that so I'll move back and if you want it to go away just take the tool out again and click once in an area and then it'll go away another cool thing once you take this tool out is you can you might be able to do with this one nope it looks like you have to be on the <coughs> the rectangular select tool so right click there's refine edge that's a good one but the bigger one is magic cut so if I click on magic cut it'll be, do like some auto cut out so you see that almost took a perfect cut out of my screen uh, did some weird stuff over here. You can probably fix that. Green means keep. You want that in the photo for sure. Gray means neutral. And the red means not in the photo for sure. So I'm going to get some of this red to see if you can get my face back in there. So my face is in there pretty well. It doesn't do a perfect job. If you can see, there's kind of some stray pixels around the area. So it's not perfect. Sometimes you have to go and clean up. But it does help quite a bit. So I'd hit this other layer so I can unhide that if I want that back. It didn't delete it. And I don't actually want this layer, so I'm just going to get rid of that. We also have Refine Edge, which I used to use a lot, but there are better ways to do this now, I think. Um, it's better if you do a square and then Refine Edge. Oh, I clicked on Magic Cut again. So Refine Edge will give you a little edge, and you can make that border larger by Going, making the border size bigger it, you can see it kind of is fuzzy but it's also once you bring it in there it doesn't do a great job you can it, this is similar to the green neutral and red if you look at it here it looks 
not super blended very well. Using the race tool, we can do a lot better blending in the blend tool, or sorry, the blur tool. The lasso is, very, is the same thing as the square select. It's just any really shape you want to make. I don't use this magic wand at all. Crop tool just lets you crop the different layers and images that you have in there. Don't use the eye drop or the spot healing. There's actually quite a few of these I don't use. The next big one though would be the erase tool. So you can erase anything on the layer that you're on. It only erases the layer on, so it doesn't erase this other layer. You can, so anytime you want, you can press Control Z to go back. You also have the history up in the top right, which you can click different parts to go back to. It only goes back so far, I believe, so don't go too far into something you don't want to be able to get out of. You can choose the size of your erase, br erase brush, so if I wanted to go around my face, see it doesn't look super great. So if you have, don't want these sharp edges, you can turn down the hardness, which gives this effect that I was talking about earlier that does it a lot better than the refined edge. And that's not super great, you can turn down the hardness more. And it, it just, you know, when you turn down the hardness, it goes a lot larger than your actual size of your circle too. It also makes your circle smaller. So let's jump back here a ways. Let's go down to the next tools. So I don't use this, I believe it's like a gradient. Don't use that one. But this blur one is another big one. So the blur, you can choose the size of the circle and the hardness. But for example, let's look at these two layers. There's a sharp edge right here. So if I blur that, it makes that sharp edge really go away. So if you have two different types of uh, pictures, it's really good right to blur the two together. Just be careful around words and any other sharp ledge edges like this, for example, this logo we want to keep for Photopea. So we want to be careful not to blur that. So we could use a lot, sm a lot smaller blur tool. That could be what I was going to do. I was actually going to give it a nice edge, a nice border, but we could just look at blurring. So I, what I want to do right now is go in a lot closer. So I'm going to use, so you, if you just use the scroll wheel right now, you can move up and down. And then if you use alt, you'll actually zoom in. And the other one is control to move left and right. You hold down control, mouse wheel, and then zoom in, alt, hold in alt, and then use the mouse wheel. So. We're getting close, you can definitely see the pixels now. Let's turn down the size a lot, so if we just move around the edge here, the black doesn't matter because you're not gonna be able to see it unless it's by the edge. And then we can also blur the picture, but the main picture behind it too, because then we can see a lot more. You can see all my great photos I have in there too, especially like that one. So now I'm going to blur the photo behind it. I change layers, make the size a lot bigger to make it easier for me. There, and it blended in a lot nicer. I might actually move Photopea down a little bit, which means I should also blend it a little bit, blur it a little bit more. So come up here, just get that edge a little bit. Oop, that looks like it blends in pretty good. You don't really see any sharp edges jumping out at you. There's more tools like the dodge tool. I'm not sure what that one does. This add text one I also use a decent amount. You can drag in the box text box and then you can just start typing. In this text mode you can change the size, the color, you can change the font. They have a lot of fonts lot of ones to pick through. They have like a Star Wars one. They don't really have any official ones that you might see from Microsoft. Sometimes they'll bold or italics. And then once you kind of got this main part figured out with the font, then you can come over to this select tool and you can change the different size and kind of do more of a free any size and any location. So what I'm actually going to do with the text is I'm going to do free Photoshop. So when you're creating a thumbnail for a video, you want something that's going to stand out and catch people's attention. So that's my goal with the 
point of saying free Photoshop. So let's make it all in one line. It's gonna need the box a little bigger. I'm not sure what's going down with this box down here. So let's move it down to the bottom. I'm gonna fix the font and the color because I hate both of those options that we have right now. If you don't click on it at all, it'll and, and just click on the layer, then it, you don't have to. You, like you can individually select like just this word and then change the font, but I feel like it's best to keep everything the same so it's more cohesive. I'd like to pick something that matches the other font that I have on my text, just like I was saying, cohesion. This one is nice. Kind of makes me think of like medieval times, but I want something a little bit better. Do they have a thicker version of this? Looks like they do. Mm, I don't know if that's what I want though. Is there like a light bold? I think we're just gonna go with this one. We need the size to be a little bit smaller. You know, maybe we could do a little bigger. I definitely don't like the color though. So they have white fonts, I think we're gonna stick with a white font. And then we can also, we could give it a black background like this one has, or what we can do is we can we could just blur out the bottom. It could be a good option. You're really gonna make it stand out though if you give it a, a good solid background like the black. But I can, another, it's a different option is just give it a black border. I think what I'm gonna do is just blur the background behind it. Make it stand out better. Keep my finger nice and high res. And then try to make everything else behind the text kind of blurred out. There we go. And then that's most of the tools here that I use. There's all, you can make a box. I, I mean, this is probably what I would do if I put a box behind it. <laughs> Unless I grabbed something from the internet. So I could just do something like this. If I really wanted to, I don't think I'm going to. Actually, you know, maybe I kind of liked it actually. <laughs> I gotta stop flip flopping. It's kind of nice, you know? Maybe I'll keep that. Make this a little bit bigger. And then I might give this layer a separator as well. So now that we've covered all the main things, this can also change color, I don't think. Any of this is really too important. I don't really know what the difference of the hand tool is. I guess move your whole thing around. Zoom in. If you want a separate zoom tool, it's really it's so much easier just to use the shortcuts than this. Because now, how do I? I don't even know how to zoom out. Shift, no. Okay, Alt and Wheel is the best. Okay, so if you hold Alt and then you can click the zoom out, it makes sense. And this lets you mess with the colors a bit. We're also not going to do that. And these are tools that I'm not too worried about either. Virtual keys, if you want a keyboard on the screen. Okay, yeah, let's go back to our select tool and let's go to our actual layer. Let's start with just our black shape. So the, these blending options on top are really what I use the most of when I am eh, want to do something special to text or, for example, this black background. And I'm on the wrong thing. Let's go to our black background. So we have a lot of options here. It's kind of overwhelming. I'll show you, just walk through and so you know kind of each what each one do. And you can click on it. Like, you can check this box to really just see what each one does. It will be better, easier to see it with this text. So let's hop over there. So you can see right off with the blend and boss, or emboss, we're getting a little bit of an inside kind of feature here. I don't know if you have to have these on for contour to work. Let's see the difference. Yeah, it just kind of adds more of that inner, it's almost like a shadow, but not really. I think it does look kind of nice. I don't definitely do not like these textures. Stroke is one I don't usually use, so 
it might be let's hide this back layer because that could be causing us problems with seeing what stroke is doing yep looks like it's actually adding a nice border I usually don't do this one but this looks like a good border option so if we go to inner shadow this kind of does the same thing as the contour and texture you can change the angle of it you can change the opacity which means kind of how much it's visible the distance spread and size different between the distance the distance is how far away it goes so this is a long distance this is just a shorter distance the size just makes it really big overall it makes it just blacks it out obviously here and the spread makes it not as hard of a line is what I remember but I don't see it change good this time noise I don't like to use noise kind of uh, make if you know what a white noise is it just you can see obviously that there's a bunch of white pixels mixed in there inner glow is very similar to inner shadow well okay sorry it's not inner shadow it's similar to inner shadow because it's actually coming from all sides it's not just at one angle so let's see if we can't see this one inner glow sometimes i change stuff to normal in order to see it because i think that was on lighten which or maybe it was on screen but either way i think it was looking for a light effect and it was dark color so I didn't like that so you can make inner borders like this this is gives you a lot more control and stroke if you make it larger it makes it the spread a higher spread I think actually it's kind of like a combination of range and spread I usually look to get the finer line so a lower spread it's it's gonna be not as hard of a line it's gonna be a very soft line kind of when we turn down the roughness and then range is kind of is gonna do is gonna help you can change so if we have the spread all the way up it does change it looks like it just the distance uh, goes out farther if you have the range down but having the range up also makes the final line looks less pixelated so I like to use that satin I, this is one I don't really ever use obviously has some interesting effects so this is what you're looking for it it's kind of cool don't know if I would ever use that though let's check that one so color overlay if you just want to change the color without the way we did the text beforehand and you can do this with any of the pictures we're not gonna do that right now gradient overlay gradient overlay is actually very cool they do a lot of these effects in Whenever anybody makes a font for any sort of movie or any special cool colored font, they'll maybe do some gradient here. So let's zoom out. You can change the. Right now we have a linear one, so it's just one side's one color, one side's other color, which is right now just white and black. You can click on the bottom and then you can change the color. So if you wanted to do a blue. You can. This uh, lets you change really any color, and then you can go through the rainbow here. If you know like the hex value or the RGB or any of these other ones, you could use that as well. They have a lot of options, which is very nice. And then maybe if we want the other color to be yellow, is that going to be pretty ugly? Are we going to get a green? I don't know if that works in with LEDs. It might be more of like a, just a, a paint thing. Anyways, you know what opacity does? We can change the style because we have linear and then we have radial. Radial is kind of cool. It's right from the middle. It's uh, basically a circle from the middle. We have the angle, which is weird. It's like an angle that you can turn around. Reflected. This is probably my favorite one just because you can have one color in the middle with the other color on the edges. I think that's pretty cool. And then diamond is not another one I use. I think it's similar to the circle, but a diamond in the middle. Looks like. Pattern overlay. I don't really like using the patterns because you only get a few options. Outer glow is very similar to inner glow. That's what I like to use for an outer border. I make an outer black border. I'll just make one here quick so you can see. 
how I do it. If you go down and choose black, turn the spread. Let's make the size a little bigger just so we can see it well. And then we are going to turn the range up. That looks less pixelated. We want this spread all the way up. That's better edge. Turn, make the size smaller so it's not as thick and then opacity all the way up. And then we can make this maybe a little bit smaller, like six pixels. And that looks pretty nice. So this is what I would do if I wanted to make just a black border around it. And I could throw a lot of this other stuff in, like maybe blend and embolus. Maybe I want to also have a gradient overlay, even though the yellow and blue that I chose is definitely not my style. <laughs> I just thought I picked it up randomly. So I did something funky here. Do I want it? Okay. So the way I like to mess with this one is you can choose the scale. Let's you see how big the kind of the style that you're using is. So obviously you can see it's making the blue larger here. So maybe we should pick some in more some better colors. We may even want to go back to white and black. You can change kind of when when things change to different colors here too. I'd recommend using the style though. I think that's easier than messing with this. I don't know. I think that's kind of cool. <laughs> Maybe I should make the... I think it might be better to have the middle be black though. I wonder if I can... Can I reverse it right here? Yeah. Okay, that's exactly what I wanted. And now I want the scale to be a little bit smaller. Just so it, over here it's kind of hard to see. It's really hard with these E's and the F over here. I feel like having that black line through them makes it hard to see. I could, in that case, do a white inner glow. That might help kind of the viewer see it better. So we want the spread all the way up, I believe and the range all the way up, but we want a, just a smaller size. Yeah, I think maybe even smaller, honestly. Yeah, it looks good. I like that. All of this, it's definitely just creative decisions. Nothing, it, it, there may be some science to what looks better, but it's just personally what I Think looks better. We can even try to throw this black border back on, but I think that looks worse. So I think at this point I'm going to... One thing I also wanted to mention, so with these blending options, you can actually make duplicate layers and whichever one is on top, so you, if you click this arrow it'll change which order it's in. And whichever one top is the one you see. Or the, it's kind of, it's like these layers. Like if, if this bottom layer was on top, you wouldn't see anything anything else because it covers the whole screen. So let's delete this. Oops, delete the wrong one. Okay, delete this black. <laughs> delete the black box now. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to Photoshop it. Or sorry, take a screenshot of this. But I want to take a screenshot of this entire page just so that I can put that on my entire computer screen here. So we're gonna move this back to the middle, kind of. Maybe we should zoom in a little more, like that. Click on this so you get the whole picture. Then we're gonna do Windows Control, or Windows Shift S, and I am going to capture this whole screen. And then I'm going to paste it on here, just like that. Now here's the tricky part. I haven't really warped a picture before to make it fit like this. You can do rotations, but my monitor is actually curved, so getting it to actually curve on there might prove a little bit difficult.
Alrighty, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another picture. And then I'm gonna take this. And what I could do actually is put this one on this screen. So then we have at least like one difference going through. It wasn't really my plan, but I think that's kind of cool. We're getting very small, so I'm gonna, I am gonna—I have to zoom in to see what's going on. It's very pixelated down here. In the quantum realm of Photopia. I would like to put something on this other side so it's not just my <laughs> dark saber lamp, but whatever. I think I've kind of shown everything that I wanted to on here, and this did take a decent amount of time, especially looking for the warp feature. So we are going to export this. So when you export this, you, you go down to export as, you can also save it, which is really nice. You can save it to your local file system and then open it back up to keep working on it. You can have multiple, if you do Photopea new, you can have multiple Photopea projects open at a time. You just have tabs. Be very careful about this because I've had the, because this is web-based, right? It's not running on your local machine. So I've had it crash a few times and lose my stuff. So, but if you are able to save it, you could close it all up and reopen it and you should be good to go. Especially when you have a lot of stuff going on. Now this may be a lot of layers, but some of these are really small. So when we're ex exporting, oh, one, one, okay, sorry, one more thing I wanna do is I wanna take my logo for my page and I am going to place that in just in the, in just in a corner, just because if this is ever used again, you can s see my like, logo and kind of, it's all about branding, about trademarking your image and what you make. I don't make any money from this, so it's not a big deal, but if, I were to become really big, it would be nice to have a brand. And honestly, I, I commissioned someone on Fiverr to make this logo, so I probably won't keep it forever. It's not my favorite. It's kind of what they gave me, and it's all right, but it's not. I, th I think there's better logos for me out there. Anyways, none of that. YouTube requires a thumbnail of two megabits or less. So when you have a JPEG, a JPEG allows for stuff like clip art where there's no background and it's usually a lot larger picture. So if we go to this, you can already see it's 3.3 megabits, which that wouldn't let us upload that to YouTube. So you could bring the quality down, that's going to be underneath it. Usually, I used to do just 99% and that would somehow be under 2, but yeah, see that's under 2, so you could do that. But it's so much easier just to do JPEG and that's going to give you like the 100% quality of PNG for the most part. And then this is almost always under two, and then you can just save that. It'll go to your downloads, and then you can upload that to YouTube. So that's really everything I wanted to show you. I tried to go over as much as I could. It looks like you can script stuff, so um, I haven't messed with that. Love that. I wonder if there's a certain language they use. Looks like it's C. It's an alert. Print. Do I have caps on? Print. Hello. So, oh, wait, what? Oh, did it try to actually print when I had print there? <laughs> Maybe we just need to do alert then. Interesting. Okay, it pops up here. Interesting, that's kind of cool. So, I don't know why you'd use script to be honest. Demos. Process layers, clone layers. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that because that's coding is way past the scope of this video. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this tutorial. I don't make many tutorials, but when I do make them, they do seem to do the best, and but they take the most work by far. So if you like this video and you wanna see more tutorials in the future, you can support me by subscribing and liking this video so one more time thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video adios